Okay, facts tell, stories sell, right? I've got some stories this time around. What Grandpa had done, he actually grabbed a shovel and dug out enough soil from this crawl space so that he could call it a basement. He framed it first and then he poured the concrete floor. And so as a result, this center wall was in direct contact with the soil and it was in that condition over decades. And so now I, the home inspector, I show up and that center wall has been removed and there's signs that this entire wall, especially the base of it, had been completely riddled by termites. And not only that center wall, but the outer walls, etc., they were all uh, wood to soil contact. And the termites, you could tell there had been apparently millions of them because it was everywhere. And obviously, you, uh, you want to pour your slab first and then put your frame wall up, but Grandpa didn't do it that way. So in this particular case, we had just tons of termites that had been enjoying Grandpa's hospitality for many decades. You as the realtor, if you see those sorts of circumstances and you want to make sure that the home inspector notices them so that your client doesn't get stuck with the bill, of, um, of dealing with grandpa's improper construction techniques. Then I did a home, uh, and this one was older, and again, it's in a, a farm type community, and I'm gonna say that home was about 1905 or something like that. And that one, uh, as you go in from the door to the living room, you can actually feel that you're walking uphill. And the high point in the house is the center of the house. And then as you go on the back side of the house, you've got the kitchen and it actually slopes back down to the perimeter of the home again, what should be the foundation. In this case, what had happened is grandpa had used, instead of concrete or stone, uh, he had used a wood material for the foundation. And over the decades, that wood had been discovered and chewed on by the termites. So what had started out perhaps as 12 inches of wood had eventually become 8 inches of wood that was still heavily chewed on by the termites. And hence, the, uh, there had been crushing and the outer walls had actually settled to try and make up for some of the gaps that had been created by the termites. This underlines the fact that, again, you don't want to have wood to soil contact. You want to keep your... Um, you want to make sure that if there is that sort of thing, uh, regardless of whether it's wood to soil contact or not, you want to make sure you're draining water away from the foundation so that whatever is in or around the house stays dry. I did a home in a nearby university town where, and this one was about 1960 something, and you actually had squirrels that were getting in through the siding on one of the sides of the roof. And from there, they were making uh, a few nests actually inside the attic. And there was enough urine from the squirrels that that was keeping a termite colony alive in the walls. And uh, of course, that's all kinds of disgusting. But, you know, I'm sure they thought that the squirrels were cute, but it caused a lot of damage inside the walls. And you got the urine, you got the health effects, you've got the structural issues. So, yeah, those squirrels may be cute, but they're not that cute. We have a, another home that was similar and uh, that one instead of squirrels it was birds. The birds were flying in. You had this big old bird condo in the, in the attic and the, it was renters that were living there and they knew that there was birds up there. Again they thought that was cute. They thought they were out of the way. It wasn't a problem. Again the urine from the birds uh, they thought they had mold because they knew the wall was wet and I was called out for the mold, and it turns out we had not only mold, but termites from the bird urine. And you just imagine the disgustingness of uh, having a wall completely covered with urine all the time like that, and the health and safety effects associated with that. But if you've got those conditions that a termite queen needs, she will find you. What I tell my clients is that if you have the conditions that termites need, they'll find you. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully I can I have helped you to perhaps serve your client a little better. If you have more questions, you can always go to this website again, or you can send your clients to Master Your Mansion. It's a good place for them to learn the same kinds of information as you're getting here, only they're not getting continuing education credits for it. Thank you for your interest.